welcome to Short Stories of Dan Dan the Art Man, episode 12. This story was written for a weekly flash fiction challenge Chuck Windig runs on his website, terribleminds.com. This time around, the rules were keep it around a thousand words, and use a dice or random number generator to pick from a list of 20 different settings. My random number was 12, the New York City subways. My story ended up at 961 words. And now, The Staring Stranger. There he was again, the bum who always stared at me on the subway. I hated everything about him. His white hair tucked behind a purple bandana, his ratty black tank top hiding none of his Rambo physique, his stonewashed denim cutoffs that were much too short for anyone's comfort, and his bare feet with their two long toenails tap dancing around on the dirty black floor. Every time I looked at him, he was staring right back, like he had been waiting all day just to lock peepers with me. I turned my back to him, but I could feel his eyes, like Cyclops or Superman, shooting a hot red laser into the back of my skull. It made me itch. I waited for a long time, hoping he would get off before my stop, but he never did. No matter what time I was riding, or what stop I got off at, he was right there behind me, following me out. I looked over my shoulder for a brief second to see his unmoving eyes looking right into mine. It sent a chill straight through me. I faced forward and shivered, despite the warm subway car. I felt the subway slowing. My stop was much farther down the line, but I had to lose this guy. I waited until the last second, knowing the timing of the doors well, and shot out of my chair, sprinting out of the terminal just before the doors closed. I looked at the spot the bum had been sitting. He wasn't there. I looked behind me, but did not see him. I looked to my left, and there he was, just settling down on a bench. It was the first time I had seen him without his eyes, staring right back into mine. I darted to a column and edged behind it out of view. As far as I knew, he had not seen me, and now would not know where I was. I waited for the next subway, trying to be patient, but I couldn't help it. I leaned over the least amount possible to catch a glimpse and see if he was still on the bench. He was, staring right back at me. How could he possibly know where to look to pierce me like that with his gaze? I tried looking at him from the other side of the column. Again, his face was locked in place, directing his vision right to me. I slid back out of sight. The subway came to the stop, and again, I waited until the last moment and sprinted inside. The doors shut just as I got both feet in. I looked out the window and saw that he had left the bench, but I didn't see him anywhere in the car. I found a seat. Before long, the itch was there again. I didn't want to look, but I had to. Sure enough, he was there, staring me down, this time his eyes so wide that I wondered if he was in some sort of pain or something, his ugly feet tapping away as if he was in the best of moods just riding along in the subway while his bulbous eyes were aimed at me like a rifle. I didn't look at him again. I just waited. Once the next stop came, I jumped up and flew out the door. Just before it closed, I jumped back inside. I looked and saw the bum outside of the subway car. (laughs) Finally, I had won! Finally, I could sit in peace until my stop came. I found a seat and sank into it, letting out a deep breath. I had almost fallen asleep when I felt his eyes on me again. I looked up, 
my eyes jumping around the subway car. There he was, sitting in the seats across from me at the other end. I'd had it. If he wanted to play games, I could play games. I stood up and found an empty seat directly across from his. His gaze followed me with every step. I sat down and stared right back at him. I already knew everyone else in the car was staring at us too, so I gave up all worries of being embarrassed. In a booming voice, I did my best impression of Will Ferrell as Robert Goulet in a Saturday Night Live skit and yelled at him. Look at you. You're hungry. You don't even blink, do you? Quick, staring contest. Me and you, now. We stared at each other. The car was silent. I was through with this guy. If he wanted to try and weird me out, I was going to do it right back to him. I opened my eyes as wide as I could and leaned in towards him with the maddest grin I could spread across my face. Then I blinked. You win. You always do. That's why I come up here. Nature! Goulet. Everyone went from looking at the two of us to looking at him. I had won. Now all eyes were on him. Every passenger was giving it right back, staring him down as he had done to me so many times. To my great surprise, the man's face flushed red and he blinked. The subway slowed. For the first time, he looked away from me at all the others. He shrunk back in his chair. The doors opened. He glanced at me one more time with an angry frown and then ran out of the subway car. The familiar ding-dong sounded, and the doors closed. For the first time, I rode the rest of the way home in peace. The End Hey guys, this is Dan, and uh, wow, between my dog barking and uh, other various sounds from, the, I think, the dryer or the washing machine downstairs, I managed to get this really short little flash fiction story recorded. Oh man, this one was a lot of fun, just kind of a, a really different story. Uh, it was totally inspired by when I used to ride the bus from up around University of Washington in Seattle to downtown Seattle, where I went to the school. Art Institute of Seattle for school, and um, I had some crazy uh, fellow passengers on that bus ride. Most people were just like me, going to work or going to school. <laughs> oh, you can hear my dog. But uh, yeah, one guy uh, told me he was going to commit suicide that night, and I could really smell a bunch of weed and alcohol in his breath, and um, he asked me if I liked rock and roll, and so he started to beatbox and mouth and sing the guitar parts to his band's songs. Hello. I got a new iPhone. That's what that sound was. I love it. It's the new uh, 5C. Um, I've had Blackberries for the last, like, five years. I loved the physical keyboard and used it a bunch for writing. There's my dog again. But I really like this iPhone. Um, it's great for just about everything. So many apps, so much I can get done with it. And I digress. Another time, some guy was like, Hey man, can I buy your pee from you? Apparently he had to take a test for a uh, job that he was trying to acquire. And I was like, uh, I got to get to class. So, no. <laughs> Anyways, um, I don't know, this story just kind of came from that. And I just... Also, there were a lot of people asking me for money on the way to... Uh, on my walk from the bus stop about 15 blocks to school. And just around the university district. Lots of crazy people. And some were just so high or whatever that they just, they were just so weirded out when they would try and contact with me. Sometimes I would try and weird them out. So that's where I got that idea. Anyways, I'll wrap this up. Thank you guys for listening. I'm going to keep working on my novella. Just got some uh, notes back from a friend and it's really going to help me make it a whole lot better. But I won't go on and on about that like I usually do. I'll just let you go and say thank you so much for listening. Have a good one. 
This podcast is licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivative Works 3.0 International License. Music by Kevin McLeod over at Incompetech.com. Sound effects from the Free Sound Project at freesound.org. This has been Short Stories of Dan Dan the Art Man. Thanks for listening to another story brought to you by dandantheartman.com. Goulet.